the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. The fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 2 from verse 7 please. I'm just trying to establish a few things that will lead us to understanding the theme and then we'll pray. Are we there? Verse 7. Okay, it's projected. I think many of us can follow. As many as possible. And... The Lord God did what? Formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. There's something I want to pick out here. When the Bible says God formed man from the dust of the earth. Now Adam was not just the name of that man. Hallelujah. When the Bible says God formed man that the name of that formation itself is Adam. Are you getting my point now? Now, he said God made man from the earth, the dust of the earth. Now, there is a mystery there that I want you to understand. It doesn't just mean God used clay to make man. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because according to ecology as we know, right? You will not be able to dwell in a system if you cannot relate with that environment. Is that true? So God made the spirit of man. But when it comes, it, it, it came to forming the body of man. The Bible says God made man, Adam. What, what it meant was that God used the raw materials of the system to fabricate the body of man. Are you getting my point? So that it will grant him the opportunity to be able to relate freely in this realm. The biological components of man, the psychological components of man were created from the materials within his environment. Are you following me now? Praise the Lord. So that there is a consistent interaction between the man, Adam, and the environment. And five elements work together to create man. Number one, light. Number two, wind. Number three, water. Number four, earth. Just follow me. What's number one? Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five, sound. Please just follow me. I want to establish something. Open our eyes in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, these five elements, as we know, look up, please. They are the five elements that govern the interaction of man and his system. Are you following me now? Light, the earth, the food that we eat comes from where? Is that true? The water we drink, without water, you know that we will die. Meaning there is a relationship between the waters and the body of man. Is that true, please? The light, sunlight as we know. You know that without light, there is no life. Is that true? And then sound. Sound. Physics has gone so far to tell us a lot of the implication of sound. It has been established that we live in a planet that is governed by sound. Sound. 
Hallelujah. Business people have postulated theories to be able to let us know that your thoughts produce sound. That your life produces sound and it takes sound to be able to communicate and all of that. You are listening to me upon the strength of sound. We all know this just to be physics but I am telling you that all these elements were not of this realm. They were imported to help man become compatible. Just follow me. This is the reason why the description of the Holy Spirit in the Bible has been in the similitude of these elements. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And so when the Bible says God made man, what it means is that in the making of this body called Adam, these elements are found. That's why we drink water. Is that true? That's why we need light to see. You cannot see in darkness. You need light to see. You need sound to hear and do a lot of other things. We need the earth to be able to plant our crops. Mysteries. You open the ground and throw a seed and close it. And don't supervise it. You don't need a remote control. Something begins to happen that we cannot explain. Brothers and sisters, imagine the mystery of this earth. Is it living? You throw a seed. The earth has the resurrection power in it. You throw a seed and the Bible tells us that that seed dies. The earth without prayer brings it back to life. I'm showing you the elements of creation. Without prayer, no man can manipulate the earth. No matter your fight, you cannot be angry with the earth. Because it is spiritual. Number two, fire. Or light. Let's just call it light. Really. But you can put light stroke fire. You cannot box light or box fire. You cannot monopolize it. You cannot do anything. It's an entity that is strange. It is not scared of anything. Yet it threatens everything. Spiritual elements. Number three, water. A great mystery. Great mystery. You can't hold it. Yet it has weight. Heavier than anything mysteries that surround our world that many of us may never get to really understand and appreciate we see it all the time what is the relationship between your body and water brothers and sisters animals take water plants take water hallelujah meet a man who is dying of thirst give him water and he's rejuvenated what does it do to him it's more than biology. It's more than biology. Hallelujah. And then another mystery is even how the rain falls. Hallelujah. That vapor rises without the eyes of man seeing, condenses in the atmosphere, purest form by itself, distills itself, and begins to empty itself upon the earth mysteries that surround our world and the bible says man was made of these elements meaning if you corrupt any of these elements it will translate into the corruption of man are you getting what i'm saying you now see the reason why demonic spirits use these five elements for their operation satan is called the prince of the power of what that's we is that true we see the holy spirit manifesting as the wind we see the holy spirit manifesting as water we see the holy spirit manifesting as light or fire now I, i'm just helping you to appreciate the fact that it's not just that we we stumbled across these things and we found them being used in scripture they are in they are not the only elements are you following me now it is only because they are the elements that are important for the existence and the functionality of man there are many other elements. But we know those five. Just like we have five senses. Is that true? But those are not the only senses. Now I know that people have taught great men like Papa Hagen and the rest. They've written books and they've said we also have spiritual, five spiritual senses. Of course you can look at the level and the, the, the dispensation with which he wrote those revelations. But now we know better. 
it cannot be that there are five senses there are senses as infinite as the wisdom of god that's why you can receive certain communications of the spirit that you cannot explain physically because the the equivalent sense to help you interpret it is deficient are you getting what i'm saying now god made man to interact with these things so when i drink water when i walk with the earth when i take advantage of the illumination from light right and I, 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 I walk with these elements. They sustain my health. They sustain my vitality. And they help me to function in the earth. And it so happens that these elements, because they were imported from the spirit, when the Holy Ghost begins to function with this man, Adam, he also comes in the similitude of these elements. Are you getting what I'm saying? So he can manifest as light or fire. When he manifests as fire, it's a revelation of his dimension to be able to achieve certain things. When he manifests as wind or sound, it says that I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound. Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Ghost was coming, a mighty sound, a rushing wind right and so we see these operations of the spirit the prophet said oh wind breathe upon this slain and the bible says the wind came and entered them and suddenly the flesh the sinews that came came from the earth it, i will cause sinews to come and cover the bones are you following me now and so the manifestation of the holy spirit is in the similitude of these elements. That's why when you go to a herbalist, he will still use these five elements to concoct everything because he's working with man. Is that true? When you go, I've, I've, I've taught us already, but then let me just share it. The principle of reflection, we call it, that everything in creation should reflect its maker. Is that true? And because man is the hallmark of God's creation, everything in creation should be reflected in man is that true and so i told you that the eyes of man was made from what water right the similitude of vision the same way that you go to a herbalist and it does incantations on water and suddenly that water becomes an eye and he starts seeing through it right i told you that the hair of man was made in the similitude of grass is that true that's why you can barb it and everything you know that similitude the veins of man were made in the similitude of roots of plants. Is that true? The bones of man was made in the similitude of stones. That's why they can stay long even after, just like the stones. Are you getting what I'm saying? The body of man, this flesh was made from the earth. That's why it is compatible with the earth. When men die, where do we bury them? Not in the sky. We don't just hang them somewhere in the sky. Is that true? We bury them. He said, for thus thou art and to dust thou shalt return is that true that means you are dust so when the holy spirit begins to function he functions in these dimensions watch this notice the coexistence of wind light water and all of this to keep you alive can you choose water and say there's no need for light is that true you need all of these dimensions now that's how it is spiritually every season because rea realize that god is building another spiritual man is that true he says we all as living stones there is a spiritual house god is attempting to build and the name of that house when completed is called the bride of christ in her perfection god is walking molding he said my little children of whom i travel until christ be formed in you like an architect trying to build a mystery using the bride to make a bride that bride that is spotless and so based on that creation god is using us and forming every element that needs to be in us so that as a church we can be presented as that apostolic bride Are you following me tonight? 
so the holy spirit reveals himself in different dimension after the similitude of these elements of creation and every one of his dimensions comes to initiate an understanding about god and to initiate a certain kind of function just like water water does not just do what light does water does not just do what wind does but without wind water cannot move is that true that's there is a coexistence when i began to seek the lord this year for the prophetic word he said i will reveal myself to my people as the rain the rain not just water the rain that caught my attention for me i was very very excited very very excited because i know a bit about water and i i have studied a bit but when the lord began to give me that word i braced up i was excited i received it into my spirit and very briefly i'll just share with you certain things that will help us to align with the prophetic word of god hosea chapter 6 please from verse 1 to 3 Hosea chapter 6. Come and let us return unto the Lord. For he hath torn and he will heal us. He hath smitten and he will bind us up. Verse 2. After two days he will revive us. In the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. Verse 3. I want us to read it together. One to read. And he shall come to us as how hold on he said and he shall come to us meaning this is how he has chosen to reveal himself to make himself manifest in the midst of his people not a rain he says and he shall come to us as the rain a combination of the former rain and the latter rain now i don't want to go into the whole theology of the arguments about former rain um latter rain and all of that that's not our point of interest tonight but it's just for us to know that god wants to come and manifest himself this year 2015 as the rain the rain the rain what then is this rain very quickly what is the rain really i wrote a few things here and i'll just read them out so that we can have some notes the rain is a dimension of the outpouring of the spirit the rain is a dimension of the outpouring of the holy spirit upon people and territories that is responsible for activating certain spiritual realities the rain is a dimension of the outpouring of the holy spirit upon people and upon territories responsible for activating certain spiritual realities there are different spiritual realities because every dimension of the holy spirit helps you to access certain dimensions hallelujah when the holy spirit is revealed as fire there is a dimension of him that we can access on the strength of that revelation when he's revealed as rain or water or dew or whatever it is in that similitude when the holy spirit is revealed as oil when he's revealed as a dove when he's revealed as all of these things they all attempt to communicate certain dimensions of his operation and dimensions that can be accessible hallelujah there are seven seven dimensions or expectations i want us to have as the holy spirit reveals himself as the rain seven things happen in the life of any man and any territory when the holy spirit is permitted to reveal himself as the rain we'll just run through it very quickly number one when the holy spirit reveals himself to a people as the rain there is an unusual dimension of soul winning 
unusual dimension of soul winning because harvest is tied to rain harvest is tied to rain hmm. harvest is always tied to rain he said in isaiah chapter 32 from verse 15 he says until the spirit be poured upon us so he uses the language of the rain until the spirit be poured upon us from on high and then the wilderness will be counted for a fruitful vine and then that vine will multiply and become a forest so one of the things that happens to a people or a territory when the holy ghost begins to manifest as the rain is that there are unusual dimensions of soul winning and transformation transformation we had our brother who came here and shared how that he had never seen me i don't know how, how probably without exaggeration thousands of people who say i have never seen you most people outside of this circle have seen me in either dreams or visions you see that the rain unusual dimensions of soul winning and so that's one of the things we expect to see this year that there will be unusual dimensions that rain will pour on people you see when the rain begins to pour it does not select who to fall on. is that true when it falls it falls upon everyone and you must carry a trace of it it will wet anybody it will wet any car that's the dimension of the spirit so he will fall on unusual people he will fall on business people he will fall on students he will fall on workers unbelievers had you will see hardened criminals come to christ people who vowed by themselves god forbid over my dead body to be born again you will see them come mysteriously and then you will know that the rain fell on them hallelujah people who hid that all have refused to accept jesus christ you will argue with them they will say look if if jesus is real why are pastors this you know all those all those arguments they bring you will see them walk in dimensions i tell you, you three o'clock you will see them come to stand at koinonia shaking they cannot explain what brought them the moment you see that know that it is the rain because every time a rain will fall you will see clouds there is a sign there is a rain and that rain will fall it will bring i'm not talking of salvation of one leg here today and two legs out to say i had it no 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 no. genuine that all your legs will be stationed and established in the kingdom that's why i said so winning and transformation you know i've questioned a lot of what people call born again right if you truly meet with this rain there must be transformation hallelujah all of those kinds of what I used to do before, I'm still doing it again after 10 years. I'm, you did not meet with the Holy Spirit. If you truly meet with the Spirit of the living God, the Spirit of the living... A donkey met with him and started talking. No rehearsals. Look, let me tell you, if the Holy Ghost meets with you, something must change. He has nothing to do with whether you have faith or not. There is an imprint. When rain comes, it does not ask you what kind of material. You live and there is an evidence. Have you seen rain come and then there is a nice lady who is wearing, um, what they call it, those you people's dangerous shoes that, that is pointed, you know, and she's trying to just run. The rain is whipping her. No regard for whatever she, whether it's with one or your natural hair or whatever hair, whether rain just comes lord send that avalanche yeah. we are tired of discussing with certain family members that will not change in this season of the rain mm. the moment he's kicking the car the car will not kick again and the only he can't open the door and he will hear a voice and he will say how long will you keep running away from me personal salvation genuine personal salvation i want you to believe look let me tell you there are seven things this is number one but this is major every one of us must participate cooperating with this rain because 
when when rain falls there are certain people who can how many of you have seen rain fall and then some people bend their zinc strategically to make sure that water enters some vessels that's how some of us will be you will say this rain is almost reaching my uncle oh lord where is that zinc you must tilt it to touch him oh no look let me tell you there will be massive salvation this year it's called anakazo a compelling evangelism not not too much of drama and they're asking you did you quote it correctly do you know that that means you are not a serious believer and then what would have been is a simple encounter becomes three hours of foolish argument the bible calls it vain talk right you keep arguing whether is this and that should this person do this does your church do this when the rain comes when the rain comes some of you all you will need to tell somebody is come jesus looked at them and said come no argument that's how they got up because that rain comes with it a dimension of the spirit do you believe that number two when the rain comes we will experience increased dimension of love for god and passion for spiritual things listen to me every time rainy season comes it supplies energy upon the farmer to go to the farm is that true when he sees the rain he's excited when the rain falls every one of us every one of us must fall in love with god it comes it's a dimension of the holy spirit that all of a sudden makes jesus become a priority in your life so it's not just the issue of being fanatical he emphasizes the priority of the things of the kingdom the house of god evangelism prayer your your passion for spiritual things come alive Jesus must become a priority in our lives this year. Not an option. Many of us love the Lord, but there are many distractions. Jesus is not a priority to many of us. But this year, this season of the rain. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. Let me tell you one of the things that the rain does. The rain washes away filth. There are many things that have covered our eyes and our lives that would stop. Some of us love God, but there is a devil seated on our face called our mouth that will not allow us to serve God well. Are you getting what I'm saying? Your spirit wants to serve God, but your mouth, this mouth is, is, is an empire, is Babylon seated on your face. And if you don't tame it, let the rain wash away that thing, that field. There are many of us, our lives, this is the year when you say, Lord, let this rain come. Passion. During my retreat, I said, Lord, I really want to love you. I don't want to fake it. I know that I love you. You know, people send me a text and say, may God give me one tenth of your love for God. I said, really? You've not seen anything yet. Madly in love. For some of you, may God give you the kind of love you have for women. May God convert it to be love for him. In the name of Jesus Christ. In 2015, may it happen. No, we're here to enforce it tonight. Because, see, the way many of us love things that are not God. Money. Reputation women men intellect now i'm not against all of those things but i am telling you remember part of the things we do here is to make sure we strangle every idol to death there is only one that deserves our praise we will lay down our idols and thrones we have made and all that has taken my heart lord i will bow i will bow to you to 
one strategy of the devil one strategy of the devil to, to filter or draw away our love and passion for God is activities say activities that was the strategy Pharaoh used when Moses was coming to connect them back to God Pharaoh said ah it's because you are free I've not occupied you enough that's why you even have time to consider an exodus he said occupy them what I was giving them free, let them look for it. And that's one thing that the devil is using to destroy our generation. Ask an average young man, why are you busy like this? Four o'clock, you are awake. Sorry, I don't have time. Ba -ba -ba -ba, Lord, I thank you. You are, I mean, if you were not alive, I wouldn't have woken up. Now that I'm awake, I really thank you. And you're on your way moving. We are on the go. We have fast food. If you are hungry, enter quickly. Five minutes, you are out. This kind of life, will never produce passionate people there must come a time in your life where you must define who is worth your time ha you've won my heart oh god you've won my heart don't let nigeria fool you you are not the first to be successful are you hearing what i'm saying ask abraham ask isaac ask solomon these were men who pursued god but with that pursuit, they were successful. Take away that useless theology that the devil has given Nigerians. That if you don't get up and hustle and push, if one door closes, force another one to open. What do we call it? Hustling. In this year of the rain, may God help you to know what matters. You have only 24 hours. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I hunger and thirst for you. In a dry and weary land, all I want is you. There are many of us we don't care about the house of God. The, the house of God come for koinonia. Eh, oh yeah, let me just drag myself and come. You know, and you come and you are waiting for everybody to tell you thank you. This is the year. You tell that devil, if you, if you took advantage of my life in 2014, in this year, I mean business with God. Hallelujah. This is the year to throw away that small jotter that fire has burned half of it and buy a good hardcover exercise book and say, Lord, I mean business. Look, let me tell you, brothers and sisters. It says, after two days, he will revive us. And on the third day, he will raise us up this was my cry during the retreat i said lord i don't love you enough i searched my life to find out all the things that are still in the remaining time and i said lord i will give you time more because intimacy is a function of time it's not just about quoting koinonia intimacy is highly time dependent for the more i know you the more I want to know you, Jesus, more of you. Spend time. In this season of the rain, many of you, let me tell you, you will find out 4 o'clock, 4.30, the Holy Ghost will wake you. Hmm. Sleep goes away. No matter the tiredness, you know that is the season of the rain. And you get up and play worship songs. I want more of you. Some of you, this season of the rain will take you back to what you used to do that brought grace upon your life. That you have thrown away. There are some of us here, especially the ladies, you know what you used to do. When it was not the issue of men. Huh? When it was not the issue of beauty. Before you rediscovered yourself, that depth of passion. Some of us don't wake up in the morning again you sleep by eight o'clock you wake up by nine o'clock spiritual carelessness you don't care you don't pray for two weeks it's none of your business you check the way you drop your note on your bible last koinonia friday that's how you pick it next koinonia just say lord i thank you speak to me look it must change in the name of jesus 
let there be passion passion some of us were lied to our roommates right now they are the ones advising you huh look at how spiritual drought came and stole your fervency but no more i said no more in this season of the rain ah cold it's too cold i can't serve god or the trouser i wanted to wear is not there i wore blue last week blue this week i can't go for koinonia you are not serious when this rain pours on you you pick up that trouser and wear and say whether whether it's blue or black i want more of you priorities that will change your priorities must change you went to make your hair they made half they've not made the other half carry cap and cover it come for color see ask people and know the silly reasons why they refuse to come to the house of god very silly reasons someone say i don't have transport but let the guy say oh yeah come let's talk you you there is energy or oh, well or the lady says okay i'm waiting for you at 90s see the guy say i'm coming when he was talking he was around dark but you will be walking lord i receive strength i cover ground and you cannot come to the house of god in this year 2015 may god give us passion oh let let this rain come and let people see the difference between them and god in your life are you getting my point let the guy know you love him but when he comes to god he is truly secondary without apology what if you put anything and god don't even ask me which one anything that is not god has lost including myself if i'm secondary to god what makes you think you will be primary more of you more of you more of you jesus more sing more of you sing more of you sing more of you It's called an awakening. The Bible says, Awake thou that sleepest, and Christ will give you light. Please, you need to talk to your neighbor. Say, Wake up this year. Reignite your passion for God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sit down five minutes prayer. Oh Lord, I thank you. No, 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 no. You have to give God time. You have to give God time. Say, I will give God time. He will become a priority in my life. Yes. Nothing else matters. Look, let me tell you something. I was talking with my auntie. She lost her, her son, eldest son. The one who would, you know, be the next of kin. And when I went to her, um, when she heard I was in ministry, in her mind she said, ah, this young man, According to her, said this young man, so intelligent. You mean that's what you really want to do with your life? You know, people make it look like, ah, you mean this is it? Now, but when her son died, when I went to her, she said, if I knew, I would have served God like you in the days of my youth. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. Whether you believe in immortality or not, we are not going to be here forever. Just settle that in your mind. Is that true? Jesus said, I must walk the works of him. Five minutes without breathing, nobody will ask you all the PhDs you got. Are you aware of that? Nobody will ask you what your CGPA was. Please, let me remind you. Nobody will ask you whether you, you got married or not. As important as these things are, if you have not sat down to think about them, I want you to know that there is only one thing that will matter at the end of your life. 
We used to sing a song uh, when I was in secondary school, one Anglican song, only remembered for what we have done. You know the song? Very powerful song. So, by and large, hear me, if you keep distracting yourself and not giving God time, everything that you are giving time for now, will it secure your eternity? That's the question. You are giving your whole life to a man, yet you cannot give God. A man you cannot trust. A man who can come and say, I've changed my mind. Kai, I've changed my mind. A, a, a lady who can come and say, you know, the only constant thing in life is change. Yet you say, I give you my all. You even say it happily. Please don't laugh. I came with the fire from my retreat. Make sure you are not just laughing carelessly. I'm communicating something very serious. Passion. That you must not come for koinonia for people to see the passion. People will look at Morgan and say, what is this? This fire you have. Why is it just God all the way? God in lecture theater, God everywhere. Are you this fanatical? Absolutely. Absolutely. He said, if you are ashamed of me before men, listen, if you are ashamed of me, I've seen people die, brothers and sisters. I've had the privilege to to, to go and minister to bereaved families. I've prayed for people in hospitals. I have seen in my little life the vanity of life. That's not to make you not to get up, but I know that I plan to spend my life on what matters. That at the end of my life, when I stand before him, let me carry mantles of souls and say, Lord, I spent my life I spent my life to the last serving you. One general that we honor forever, Dr. Miles Munro, a man who cheated death left and right, front and back. There are men who have cheated death. This year, please let there be an awakening. We are going to pray. We are going to pray. For some of us, it is to return to your first love. Ha! Don't let my love grow cold. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. I need your discipline. I'm crying out. Light the fire. Lord, don't let my life go. Let me not be busy doing ministry and forget my relationship with God. Let me not be busy doing ministry, ministering, traveling around, and everybody is shouting, Apostle Joshua Selman, whereas my personal intimacy with God is faulty. See, let me tell you, men can clap for you, but this is the year you say, Lord, I want to be genuine. I'm tired of pretense. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm tired of people looking at me like a Christian, thinking that I love God, walking based on yesterday's anointing, yesterday's oil, walking based on the applause of yesterday, whereas my today is faulty. Number three, when the rain falls, it brings unusual access into the mysteries and the operations of the kingdom. This is one of the things that we are going to be experiencing in this year of the rain. Unusual access into the mysteries and the operations of the kingdom. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Please media you help us. We have to really be fast. Deuteronomy 32 verse 1 and 2. Let me show you a scripture. Malakata. Deuteronomy 32. Mambroski, brother, Shilaba. Okay, let's just watch. Okay. It says, Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. Verse 2. Read together. How? My doctrine, my mysteries. I will give you certain revelations and it will come 
in the similitude of the rain. It will, it will be an avalanche. It will come in abundance. Hallelujah. My secrets, my mysteries will come upon you as the rain. No matter how the drizzle is, if you channel it well, it can fill buckets. It says, my doctrine shall drop. It says, my speech shall distill as the dew. High. Abundance. Some of you will open Genesis and you'll be reading Genesis for months because you will see things there that you never saw. And God said, that will be the revelation you'll be exploring for two weeks. And God said, a sound planet that it moves with words and God said my doctrine my mysteries will fall upon koinonia like rain ah. so that you will begin to see the puzzles joined together that these are the keys these are the operations of the spirit that activate certain dimension of kingdom realities Brothers and sisters, hear me. The Bible says it has been given unto us to know. The word know is the word intercourse. The same word like a man knowing his wife. It has been given unto us to intercourse. That's the word epignosis. A state where you know a thing by becoming that thing. Not just by hearing about it. It's an operation that only exists in the spirit. So in the spirit, if I want to know how this speaker is, I will have a feeling of becoming it. Accurate knowledge. My doctrine shall come upon you like the dew. So that many things we have believed that are confusing us and stopping us from experiencing the reality of God. When there is an avalanche of access to the mysteries of God, some of you will begin to find out what is responsible for the tragedies and the operation of darkness in our families and you will know what to do he said jesus himself knew what to do this year may you know what to do because in the kingdom we arise and we shine when light comes we reign upon the strength of light not when your light is available when it comes when it comes he said they that have sat in darkness have seen a great light a great light a great light a great light daniel chapter 2 verse 19 there is a god that can show men mysteries there is a god we are going to contend for mysteries we'll look at verse 19 22 and 47 long story a king had a dream and forgot it and said if you don't tell me what this dream is and the interpretation i will kill you very simple Hallelujah. The king had a dream and he forgot it. And he gathered all the soothsayers and wise men and said, I don't know what you would do. Go and invoke whatever you can invoke. But if you don't tell me this dream, I guarantee you, you will die. And the Bible says, Daniel asked for time. He said, give me time. Everybody say time. Hmm. You don't want revelation. God is not Mr. Biggs or Chicken Republic. He said, Lord, as I'm going, just let it come. I, I didn't have time to prepare. Now that I'm going for the meeting, let it just drop as I'm coming. Don't take the mercy of God for granted. It takes time. Daniel told the king, he said, I can tell you what I need time because it's in the place of intimacy that you experience that rain. And he said, then was what? The secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision and Daniel blessed the God of heaven. In the night, while men were snoring and sleeping, the rain came. And when it came, he said, Daniel, this is it. Sit down, you're about to watch a movie. And he saw Nebuchadnezzar sleeping. And he saw what happened. Verse 22. This was Daniel acknowledging God. He said he revealed what? The deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness. And the and light dwelleth with him. Brothers and sisters, may God show us the things that are hidden in darkness. That have been responsible for the stagnation of our lives and our families. As this rain falls, let, let it expose things. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Well, let's just leave verse 47. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 10. The Bible makes us to understand that the Holy Spirit is able to access the mind of God. Have you read that scripture? That the Holy Spirit can reveal to us the things that are in the mind of God. Right? Scripture makes us to understand that no man knows the heart of a man save the spirit of that man. And the spirit of God has access to the mind of God and is able to reveal it to us. He said, but God had revealed them to us. How? By his spirit that will manifest himself as the rain. He said, for the spirit searched all things, yea, the deep things. May God grant unto us uncommon revelation. In this year of the rain. Number what now? Number four. When the rain falls. One of the things that we experience is. Multiplied dimensions of spiritual power. And the anointing. Multiplied dimensions of spiritual power. Mako pratala bako sitaya. When you plant a seed and bury it the moment the rain falls that seed begins to push above the earth against gravity and it comes out spiritual power a christianity that does not demonstrate the power of the holy spirit is child's play there is only one language that is understood in the realm of the spirit and is the language of power. When Moses stood before Pharaoh, I was watching the, a, a, a lovely cartoon yesterday. I don't watch most of, uh, I don't have time self to even watch cartoons. But one caught my attention. Pharaoh, Moses in Egypt. And I mean, it was, it was, it was well animated. I was so touched. Better than many of the things we have watched before. I mean, very, very, very nice and very graphic. When Moses got there, there was no room for long stories. The rods were speaking. This is the year, by the grace of God, where there will be a demonstration of the power of the Spirit. This is a place of power. There must be miracles upon miracles. Breakthrough upon breakthrough. We must, it must be evident that the rain is falling. If you believe that, say amen in the name of Jesus Christ. Resulting to an outbreak of miracles, signs, wonders, breakthroughs, healings. It's impossible to have the Holy Spirit reveal himself as the rain. And will not have healings and miracles. And it will start this night. This night, not next week. This very night. Hallelujah. Some of you, you, you carry the atmosphere of this rain. And step into places. And you see the sick get healed. Look, we need to restore the church to the signs that characterize that God is at work and at alive in people. We trivialize the place of the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why we have a lot of arguments in the body of Christ. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. And by the grace of God, this place will become a habitation of not just His presence, but His power. Let the sick come and be healed. Let the oppressed come and be delivered. Not, not long stories. There are many things in our lives that do, doesn't require counseling. We need a head-on collision with the power of God. And it solves the problem once and for all. Some diseases will die a natural death when they meet the power of God. He said the yoke shall be destroyed, not by oratory. He said because of the anointing. When the rain falls upon us, there will be levels of grace. When God was showing me little visions of the things that will happen in the year and I saw some of the things I said, my goodness, oh Lord. Do these things. Let nothing restrict you. Look, brothers and sisters, you will see a demonstration of the power of the Spirit this year that will shock you. Not just from here, not just from my life, from your own life. From your own life. Your hands will do mighty things. Look at your hands and say, this year, you will do mighty things. Please, I want you to believe it. Look at your hands and say, this year, you carry an unusual unction and you will do mighty things. So we'll see multiplied dimensions of grace, multiplied dimensions of miracles, signs, wonders, 
manifestations of the power of the Holy Spirit. Next point. When the wind, when the, the rain of the Spirit falls upon us. Now take note of what I'm about to share. It will bring unusual dimensions of wealth, prosperity, and abundance. For sure. Rain. Now, agriculturally speaking, rain is tied to abundance and fruitfulness. Is that true? And one of the things that the Lord spoke to me again and again, very notably, that will happen in the lives of people is an avalanche of prosperity. I know that many of us have had these things again and again, but please, I want you to believe. Hallelujah. Prosperity. I believe in prosperity. Absolutely. Joel chapter 2, please. For time's sake, we'll just look at verse 24 and 26. Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. It says, And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. It says, And ye shall eat in what? Plenty, and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God that are dealt wondrously with you and my people in terms of finances shall never be ashamed. Do you believe that? God is going to change the stories of people. Look, it will be, the Bible says, when the Lord turn again the captivity of Zion, for many of us, it will be like a dream. People will look at you without the assistance of any uncle or auntie. You will rise. It will be a mystery. God will use you to prove that the rain has fallen upon your land. Genesis chapter 2. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. 2 verse 5. Genesis chapter 2 from verse 5. Listen, it says, And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, it said, For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no man to till the ground. When you read the verse before it, it says how that there was no vegetation. Why? Because the rain had not come. When the rain falls, fruitfulness begins immediately. Immediately. There is a relationship between that dimension of the spirit and your prosperity. And I want you to believe it. I have prayed this into my own life. I have received it. I have believed it with all my heart. This year, I will not argue with the word of God. Leviticus chapter 26 from verse 4. Leviticus 26 from verse 4. I'm giving us this scripture Let's hurry up and we'll pray. Leviticus chapter 26 from verse 4. It says, Then I will give you rain. When? And this is the season. The Lord has spoken to us. He said, I will give you rain in due season. And what will be the result? And the land shall yield her increase. And the trees of the field shall yield her fruit. In the name of the Lord Jesus, may that happen for somebody. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I have learned in my little life that the race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. Hallelujah. Joseph slept in one night as a servant, as a slave, a property of Egypt. He woke up the next day as the man in command. That would be somebody's story. When the gentleman shared about his UK, um, you know, um, the blessings of the Lord, in my mind I said, that is a drop. We are talking of an ocean. An ocean of the, the avalanche of what God will do. Men will look at you and say, whose head did you cut? You will say, no. No. It's the rain. It's the rain. Do you believe this? Or has your suffering of the past blinded you and say it's like that it came like that do you not believe that god is able to make a table in the wilderness he said they limited god by saying can god make a table in the wilderness 
a table. Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 14. Just look at that and then we'll touch on the remaining. I have to run. Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 14. I just want to give us scriptures. I want you to read if you believe. Want to read everyone? What will be the result? It didn't say your neighbor's corn. There is, there is a, listen, there is an apportioning for you. Listen, this year is not the time you sit down and clap for others and say, you mean God did it for you? Hallelujah. You must insist. Please believe. If you've never believed God for anything, why don't you connect and believe this year? He said that thou mayest gather thy corn. And what? And what? Three things your corn your wine and your oil when the rain falls your corn plenty plenty he will cause you to experience it what else do we expect two more right number six supernatural restoration when the rain falls in Joel chapter 2 the coming, the outpouring the rain and the spirit brought about the restoration. He said and I will restore to you the years. Verse 25 of Joel chapter 2 and I will restore to you the years. I will restore to you opportunities. I don't care whether it was carelessness I don't care whether it was arm robbery. I will restore everybody shout restore we have come to enforce it. The Bible says they are taken for a prey and none say it restore. 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 He said turn again the captivity of Zion like the streams of the Negev. For many families here that the devil has made it look like his Ichabod in this year when the rain falls you will see a tree that was dry you almost want to use it for firewood god will say don't cut it at the scent of water at the scent he said there is hope for a tree even if it be cut off at the scent of water i'm prophesying to someone here it looks like you are in a, a state in your life some of us think we have messed it up there is no way there is no human way but that's when god is needed if it's still possible for you, God will be resting. But when it's impossible, he will arise. And I'm speaking to someone, the way God will change your story this year, it will shock you. God, one by one, God will restore everything to the latter. Even what you said, God, is not necessary. God will say, no, 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 I'm too committed. Restoration of joy and peace. Restoration for the days of tears restoration academic restoration financial restoration marital and relational restorations mm. he said rejoice not over me my enemies he said though i fall yet i will rise while you are sitting down discussing that i died jesus died for only three days while you are discussing they say no he has risen you are talking about a man who only died for 72 hours some of you you have been subjects of discussion in your family they looked at you and said look at huh it's better to even be an idol worshiper you are mocking god but this year my father will arise you will see god revisiting things that happened 10 years ago and say i must prove a point it's not necessary but they have mocked my name in your life do you believe this i believe it with all my heart i believe it with all my heart I believe it with all my heart. God is able to restore. I'd like you to say God is able to restore. And there is nothing you can't do. Oh Lord, my eyes are on you. Be magnified, oh Lord, be magnified, and there 
there's nothing you can do and there is nothing absolutely nothing you can absolutely nothing do. oh lord see him wiping your tears in this year of the rain you can't cry forever Oh Lord, oh Lord, be magnified. Oh Lord, be magnified. Oh, that will be your song when God changes your story. Let men talk. Don't try to defend yourself. There is a defender, the God of your salvation. Oh Lord, oh Lord, be magnified. Oh Lord, be magnified. Listen, I have learned in my little life that you don't cry forever. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Just let the rain fall. <laughs> Aya. When that rain falls, you will see restorations that you cannot account for. You can't even explain how it happened. Joseph, how did you become a prime minister? Honestly, I don't know. All I know is that I woke up that morning and by evening I was on a throne. Esther, how did a villager like you become the king's wife? I don't know. I didn't instigate Vashti to look for trouble. All I know is that the rain fell. See, when I say the last point, you will know what I'm saying. This year, there will be the falling of many and the rising of others. Trust me. Many who have made mouth and concluded on others, you will see God take people that you mocked and sat down and they will rule you. you <laughs> be careful as you speak over people. Because brothers and sisters, there are others who have even said, God, take my life. And God said, are you joking? Wait and see how I, I, I will write my name upon your life. And any man that sees you will know that God is able to restore. He says, son of man, can these bones live again? Can these bones live again? He said, only down knowest. Only down knowest. The rain will fall and things will change in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The last thing that the coming of the rain will do is that the rain brings judgment upon people and territories who oppose God's agenda. Oh yes, there will be a rain. I told you that there will be the falling of many and the rising of many. Genesis chapter 7 verse 4. Genesis chapter 7 verse 4. Let's hurry up. After that we'll look at chapter 19 verse 24. Genesis chapter 7 verse 4. It says, For yet seven days I will cause you to do what? To rain upon the earth. Forty days and forty nights. And every living substance that I have made I will destroy off from the face of the earth. So the rain does not just come to bless. There is a dimension of the rain that brings judgment. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When it, when it was time to judge the world, it was water. Rain came and caused judgment. There are people who have sat down and believed that they hold the destinies of people in their hands. This year, they will receive of that rain for sure. For sure, that rain will come. Listen, two things happened when it began to rain in Noah's days. It was killing all the people who were laughing at Noah. I said, Noah, for how many years? Noah, we were young, oh. We were young. Those days when you were 70 years, you were a teenager. They say, well, we are teenagers. We were... Now, 120 years, you are still building an ark. Noah said, I know. 120 years ago, he told me rain will fall and it will still happen. And when it was time, God said, Noah, enter your ark. I will close the door by myself. When he closed the door, he said, rain, you are free to come. 
while the rain was killing others it was lifting another man's ark same rain are you seeing that now the rain was drowning noisemakers and those who have laughed at what god can do but it lifted the ark of noah and kept it on a mountain called mount ararat hallelujah that rain many of you will hear this year that the evil doers that have refused they, they are 95 years old they say we won't die we are sitting to see how you will get married when that rain falls are you hearing what i'm saying see there are men who have exchanged their life for others is that true in this year of the rain god will bring to justice i tell you is is there is no prayer of mercy it's called a written judgment it's a judgment that has been stamped and it must be executed hallelujah the rain bringing judgment two scriptures you can just write it quickly genesis chapter 19 from verse 24 and exodus chapter 9 verse 23 genesis 19 24 exodus 9 23 you don't have to project it but all of these things talk about rain one time the egyptians made noise against god rain came rain of hailstones brimstones it came and landed upon all of them there will be rain this year in this country nigeria there will be rain i saw it in visions there are people you see bragging today they will not see august this year i'm telling no 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 it's, it's the truth they will die not just they will die shameful deaths god will sign upon their death that i did it the same way terrorists take responsibility they say we are the ones that remove that head david removed the head of goliath and lifted it up i'm the one who did it god will do certain things and leave his signature and say i did it hallelujah before we quickly pray what does it take to experience the rain we've told us what will happen what the rain brings what does it take to experience the rain very quickly number one genuine hunger for more of God you want to experience the Holy Spirit as the rain this year it's not just as a prophetic word Isaiah 44 verse 3 very quickly genuine hunger for more of God that rain will only flow to those who are hungry those who are thirsty those who are serious with God he said for I will pour water upon who him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground in that similitude I will pour out my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring. You must be hungry. You must be desirous for more of God. You must be desirous. That's what it takes. You must have genuine hunger. Number two, you must have a determination to see his kingdom come. The rain does not just come for nothing. The purpose of the rain is for the harvest. The purpose of the rain is to introduce a new season. You must have a determination to see his kingdom come across lives, across territories. That means if the priorities of the kingdom are not an important thing, you don't need the rain. Why do you need the rain? If you do not have a determination to see his kingdom come. So you must be determined that this year, my partnership, koinonia, my partnership with God to see his kingdom come will be uncompromised. Number three, what does it take to experience the rain? Prayer. Say prayer. prayer. Heartfelt, continual prayer. Zechariah chapter 10, please, verse 1. Heartfelt prayers. You want to see the rain? You must pray it. You pray down the rain. Zechariah chapter 10. Zechariah 10 verse 1. We have it. Everybody read. One, two, read. 
Stop. He said, do what? Ask. Don't wish. He said, the moment you sense the season has come, start asking. Ask ye of who? The Lord. The owner. The owner. Ask him and say, Lord, this is the season. Let the rain come. He said, ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. So shall the Lord make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to everyone grass in the field. Listen, listen. We are going to ask because he said we should ask. This is the season of the rain. There's gonna be a great awakening. There's gonna be a great revival in our land. There's gonna be a great awakening And everyone Who calls on Jesus They will be saved He said, ask for the rain Zaria is our territory, it's our jurisdiction Hallelujah We must pray and say, Lord, give us the keys of this city Give it to us in this season of the rain. We ask for the rain, massive salvation, massive prosperity, massive signs and wonders, a demonstration of the spirit that will make us walk like gods upon this city. Hallelujah! More grace, fresh anointing upon the messages, fresh anointing upon the people, increase of all sorts, numerically, spiritually. All these things are the things that come with the rain testimonies and miracles for people that in this year the barren will take their children that in this year many people's situation will change these are the things that happen when the rain comes hallelujah james let's look at an example of one person who prayed and the rain came james chapter 5 please Oh, I already feel the anointing of the Spirit. My goodness. James. James chapter 5. We'll read verse 16 and 18. There's no need reading verse 17. He said, Confess your faults to one another and pray one for another that ye might be healed. Let's read the second clause. Are you ready? One to read. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availed much. And let's see an example. Verse 18. He said, and he prayed again. He had prayed and the heavens were shut and there was no rain. And when it was now time for the rain to come, what happened? He went back and the Bible says he prayed again and the heaven gave rain and as a result the earth brought forth her fruit. So we are going to be praying. He said ask ye rain. Ask ye rain. Whenever you see clouds forming it tells you rain wants to come. That's why he began to pray and he told the servant go and check. The servant said nothing. He said I will still pray. But when he saw clouds forming he said that is it that is it Pray. and the heavens give rain financial rain spiritual rain all kinds of things we are going to see the hand of God in a very mighty way God is going to lift us and exalt us in ways that will honor him God is going to make a spectacle out of us and the goal of this first meeting tonight is to bring us into agreement because you must agree that's the purpose of this little exhortation to bring us to a point where you say Lord that is it I, I believe it I believe it I believe it for my life I refuse to argue it's my season not koinonia season it's my season of the rain my season of not a rain the rain i have exact expectations we are going to be praying 
and you're going to be telling the Lord, as far as it depends on me, I'm ready to play my own role. Just supply the grace. And I tell you, for many of you, January will not end. Because he said he will bring that rain in the first month. Beginning from the first month. Many of us will begin to see things happen. It's 16 days. And, and it does not take time. When rain comes, it's an avalanche. It may take time to see the formation. But if the cloud be full of rain. Except they are not full. He said they empty themselves upon the earth. Hallelujah. And so we trust God that he will reveal himself. There will be such an outpouring. Upon the campus, there will be outpourings of the spirit. Outpourings everywhere. That from this place, like, 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 like infernos of fire, it will shoot to territories. One of, my, one of my goals this year is that all of the external ministrations that God will grant me grace, I want to take this rain to those territories hallelujah my focus this year is to take this rain to territories there are people that must catch this rain hallelujah i will be a dispenser of this rain a dispenser of this rain that you step into a place and you cause bright clouds to be open and rain rain just comes upon people unlimited breakthroughs i told god i said i'm i'm more than ready i am i'm more committed to this work like never before we're having our retreats tomorrow the leaders and the workers in the house and part of the many things we're going to be discussing is how to refire ourselves to position ourselves first to receive of this rain and to be dispensers of this rain hallelujah praise the lord and so the Lord is going to grant us grace. We are going to do three things very quickly before we conclude this service. Number one is we are going to pray. And I want everybody to participate inside and outside. I know that there are some of you, there's no space all around. Don't worry. Find a corner and pray. This is about your life. We are going to be praying. All of the seven expectations become your expectations for the year. We will pray it. And we'll pray for grace. That dimension of the spirit to be able to play our own part. Hallelujah. And after that, I believe that God is going to release upon us the supply of his spirit to ignite this grace. It's an anointing service. Rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet, everybody. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and lift your voice and begin to thank the Lord for this word give him thanks give him thanks everywhere inside and outside lord i thank you lord i thank you thank you for your prophetic word it's my season of the rain and outpouring of the dimension of the spirit upon my life I thank you. Hallelujah. Your voice and pray. Lord, I receive it. I receive it. It's not just a word for koinonia. I receive it. Lord, we 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 receive it.
Hallelujah. Pick up your notebooks. Prayer point number two. We are going to pray all those seven expectations. If you can help us, media, fine. If it's down, no problem. Hallelujah. Those seven expectations from massive salvation of souls, one by one, salvation of, of souls, increased love and hunger for God, access to mysteries, multiplied spiritual power, dimensions of wealth, restoration, judgment. One by one, you're going to personalize it for yourself, for your family. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Please take it seriously. Lord, a harvest of souls. A harvest of souls. Let the rain for your transformation. Let the rain bring transformation in the name of Jesus Christ. As we travel around the regions of this nation, as we travel even beyond the borders of this nation, thank you, salvation, the rain, the rain of your spirit, bringing salvation, the rain of your spirit, bringing salvation, the rain of your spirit.
destined to be healed, your cross to be delivered. Our miracle services will be characterized by a demonstration of the power, a demonstration of the light, and the glory of God. Greater unction in the name of Jesus. 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 Lord, we pray for a new dimension of financial prosperity, a new dimension of wealth and abundance upon my life, upon your house, upon Koinonia. We step into fresh levels. We tap into the mystery of divine supply. In the name of Jesus, I pray for every family. I pray for every koinonia member. They are stepping into abundance, 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 abundance. Lord, you will restore. You will restore. Restore destinies. Restore opportunities. Restore anointing. Restore mantles. Restore visions. Restore dreams. Restore graces. Let there be restoration. Lord, we demand a restoration of all the years that the Kanka worm has eaten, the Palma worm. We command a disaster of opportunities that have been lost. We declare judgment, judgment, the rain will bring judgment upon evil doers, judgment upon wicked men, judgment. Hallelujah. The seventh thing we say that will happen is that God will bring judgment. Hear me. There are men who have tied down the counsel of God over families. There are powers, there are forces that tie down the destinies of men. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. Still on that point. The Lord, as the rain falls, these powers, these forces, we command judgment. They must crumble because I must rise this year. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Pray like a believer. Oh yes, the forces of darkness, ancestral forces, covenant, yokes of bondage. Jesus paid the price already. Jesus paid the price in full. Jesus paid the price already. Jesus paid the price in full. Therefore, we lose the on account of the substitutionary sacrifice on Hallelujah. 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 Now, before we cry 
for a supply of grace as we start the year i'd like you to mention one thing that you know you need this rain to do in your life hallelujah there are many things and we have prayed about some of them but peradventure there are expectations that many of us have i like you to lift your voice and say lord i make a demand this is the season of the rain this and that must happen in my life open your mouth and pray Open your mouth and pray. Outside, make sure you're praying. Everywhere outside, make sure you're praying. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That rain must fall. Hallelujah. But there are conditions. I'm about to pray for you. Hallelujah. You cannot do spiritual things with your strength. You need a supply of the spirit. Hallelujah. And as we begin this year, freshness. There are many of us who must start the year on a good note. I know that for most of us here, we have been having different kinds of programs, fastings, personal fastings, some... Ah, I sense the rain, my goodness. I hear the sound of physical rain in my ears. Physical rain. Hallelujah. So we are going to pray something will come upon you this is how to start the year supply of grace no laziness that supply of grace hallelujah lift your hands please as i pray for you lift your hands as i pray for you inside and outside i want to pray for you for it takes his grace it takes that supply of the spirit to help you align to the conditions that will make the Holy Spirit reveal himself as a rain. You have asked, but you have your part to play. And we have to pray. Lift your hands as I pray. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, I pray that in a mighty way, you will come upon your people. You told us, that you will come to us as the rain as the rain and right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as I pray let that rain in strange dimensions and in strange proportions begin to fall on people at the count of three one two three let the rain fall right now. Shake it, take it, take it, take it. Let the rain fall inside and outside. Inside and outside. My goodness, let showers of rain. Lord, let showers of rain. Don't just stand watching people fall. Pray and say, Lord, I receive. Let the showers of rain fall upon everyone. The grace to pray and keep asking the grace we receive it oh lord fresh passion fresh fire the dew of heaven ah. hallelujah hallelujah keep the hands lifted up some of you will feel physical rain physical rain coming on you physical rain Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray right now by the power of the Holy Spirit that those who need the refreshing, 
refreshing refreshing the refreshing of the rain the refreshing of the rain let it wash away every failure of 2014 the refreshing of the rain 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 in the name of Jesus the refreshing of the rain I command it I declare it the refreshing of the rain it comes upon you inside and outside the refreshing of the rain hallelujah now one last thing I'll do and then I'll prophesy and we're done listen lift your hands please receive this this will come heavy upon us the Lord began to tell to me about this right from retreat there is a grace that you need to run this year with there's no time for me to begin to tell us some of the things that the Lord revealed to me but now is the time there is a grace upon this house for everyone that is connected to run with it and it's time to release it I received it in the secret place just lift your hands Father, you told me to stretch my hands and you will release that grace as you showed me in the secret place. Right now I release. I stand in my office and I command, take the grace for 2015. Take the grace for 2015. Take the grace, the supply of the spirit, the supply of the spirit. I, re I release it. As I received in the secret place, I release it for your academics, for your ministry, for your business. Take the grace inside and outside for your family. I release it. I activate that supply. I activate that supply. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands as I prophesy into your life for the year very quickly just. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that this year 2015 shall be for you a year of supernatural ease. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The grace that brings ease. The grace that brings ease. I release it to your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that the spirit of prayer and supplication in 2015, let it fall upon your life now. Grace to pray. Grace to pray. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I declare that from January to December, every month becomes for you a fruitful month. In the name of Jesus. This year, they will not be going up and coming down. Your path will be as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter. In the name of Jesus, the dimension of favor that has been earmarked for you and for this house to walk in we receive it and I release it to your life right now financial favor marital favor hallelujah I prophesy upon your life and upon this house every sinner every soul that must be saved through your hands this year let the rain supply grace to bring in that harvest in the name of Jesus Christ whatever you struggled with in 2014 I declare that in this year you will not even need to fight you will hold your peace and the Lord will fight for you hallelujah I pray for everyone's finances in this year 2015 may the lord do something in our lives that will cause our mouths to open with laughter 
in the name of Jesus Christ we prophesy supernatural marriages this year we prophesy supernatural childbirth this year we prophesy supernatural jobs in the name of Jesus Christ I declare upon you although it's a year of election but in the name of Jesus Christ I place a seal of exemption you do not live by the sword and so you will not die by the sword no one here connected to this ministry will be a victim of bomb blast will be a victim of terrorists in the name of Jesus Christ I declare that as you travel all through this year by air on the road you are protected in the name of Jesus Christ accident is far from your life in the name of Jesus Christ this is the year when we forbid you from begging in the mighty name of Jesus Christ you will be the one to bless many in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for your academics this year step into an unusual dimension of mental acumen this is the year you will record five points ah, yeah, 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 yeah. oh my goodness this is the year first class students will arise many of you will come with the spirit of Elijah and you will beat the standards you have set before hallelujah I pray for you this year your hunger for God from January till December nothing will kill that hunger the same way you are excited about God that's how you'll be excited Thank the last point on your service in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ bless his name everyone that mocked your God in 2014 that said if your God, God is alive is let him prove himself I'm prophesying to you in the name That's of the Lord Jesus Christ that the mighty one of Israel I will arise and speak for you this year forever I forget not your benefits I bless your holy name I sing your praise is forever and I forget not your benefit I will never forget I will not forget Lord your benefit how can I forget I will not forget how can I forget your benefit I will never forget I will not forget Lord I will not forget. I will not forget. Oh, Hallelujah. In one minute, I'd like you to say thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. Go ahead and bless him. You must have a reason to give him praise. You must have a reason because he is faithful. Lord, you have been faithful. The psalmist said, if the Lord had not been on my side, now may Israel sing. That if the Lord had not been by my side. Lord, we thank you for your deliverance, for your grace, for your faithfulness, for your mercies. Bless him for his faithfulness. Lord, we give you all the praise. Tonight we express our gratitude for your faithfulness, for your bountiful blessings, for the miracles, for the signs, for the wonders, for the power of your word. We give you praise. Come on, bless him in the spirit. Raka pariye ke te bere ke bala bo ko sopre ke bala de bo sa. Rata pa ka pariye ke te bala raba. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you.
Holy Holy Blessed is he Who comes In the name of our God Holy Holy Blessed is he Who comes In the name of Hosanna, 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 yeah. Hosanna, Hosanna, yeah. Who comes in the name of God? Hosanna, 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 yeah. Blessed is he who comes. In the name of our God, blessed is He who comes. In the name of our God, blessed is He who comes. In the name of our God, for Thou art worthy, O God. To open the book and unlock the scroll, for thou was slain, and with your blood you have purchased men out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation, and you have made us a people. We bless the one who was dead and now is alive. And holds the keys. Lord, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Every time we appear before his presence, it is important that we cultivate the attitude of worship and of expressing our gratitude. Sammy said, if the Lord has not been on our side, now may Israel say, Hallelujah. God has been faithful in the midst of all the chaos and the deaths and the lamentations around. He has preserved us. Believers must learn that it is an act of worship to give thanks. Bible says in Psalm 100, it says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. He said, come before him with singing. Hallelujah. It's important that we open up our hearts and express our gratitude. Let me tell you something. Every time you cease to see the relevance of God in your life, all he does is to take a step out of your life. And you will see the chaos that your life will become without him. Hallelujah. I am ever conscious of his presence. I realize that he designed us to be inadequate without him. And forever we are eternally grateful. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise. Please take on your Bibles. First and foremost, just walk to two or three people. Appreciate them. Walk up to two or three people. Just bless them. Give them a good hug. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. Father, we give you praise. Romans chapter 8. Tonight the Lord is going to be provoking us. Hallelujah. Bible says provoke one another to godliness. God is going to be challenging us. Our goal in this place is to build us, to equip ourselves, hallelujah, to prepare the army of the Lord, the generals who will take charge. We are raising a takeover generation. 
a generation of men and women who understand their king understand his ways and understand his power hallelujah the bible says saviors shall come out of zion and that they shall judge the mount of esau god is depending on us and upon our generation Bible says in Romans chapter 8 from verse 18 it says I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not compared it's not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us verse 19 says for the earnest expectation of creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of God some version says that creation is waiting for the day and the time when God will reveal who his sons truly are Hallelujah. Bible says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. He said, Now are we the sons and it doth not yet appear what we shall be like. Hallelujah. And so tonight, God is going to challenge us. It is our desire that we come to a point where we truly understand God's ways and his life and his power and his grace. For it is out of the abundance of this revelation that we'll be able to rule and to reign. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8. Lord, let your word come with fire in our spirits. Let your word challenge us and equip us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8. Please bring out your Bibles, your writing materials. Verse 15. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. He says, The Spirit himself beareth witness with our spirits that we are the children of God. Verse 17. Let's read together. One to read. The A part is my point of emphasis tonight. He says, and if children, then heirs. He says, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Tonight I want to give us a revelation of what it means to be a joint heir with Christ. Hallelujah. For many believers, the concept of being one, the concept of our oneness with Christ. I hope you realize that the whole goal of eternal life and the coming of the spirit in our life is first and foremost to bring us into oneness hallelujah the church is called the bride of christ and according to the book of genesis when god was speaking instituting marriage he told adam he says wherefore shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife and they too shall become what one flesh they too coming from different locations in this holy matrimony they become one flesh and now the bible is saying that the holy spirit comes to live in us as a testimony that god has agreed to bring us into oneness and the bible says if this statement is true then it means he tells us from verse 17 he says and if children in other words if god didn't lie if it is true that God is saying that he has brought us into oneness, then it means that we are heirs. Hallelujah. It says heirs of God and joint heirs. Joint heirs with Christ. I pray that your eyes will be open tonight to understand the power and the revelation behind not only being one with Christ, but being a joint heir with Christ. Hallelujah. The book of Esther, don't turn there. It's a prophetic book that reveals to us the power and the transition of the church of Christ. Coming into that point where we sit with the king. Hallelujah. The Bible makes us to understand that we were alienated from the commonwealth of Israel. This is the prophetic type of Esther, Hadassah. The Bible says she was cut off from the people. She was a slave girl in the countryside. 
And then the Bible says how that when King Ahasuerus banished Vashti as queen, the Bible says certain people were called. And Esther from nowhere came into a point where she was given the royal crown, the signet ring. Instantly she came into honor. And the Bible says that she was made to sit with the king. Hallelujah. And at that point, she had power and authority. You need to realize the implication of what it means to be a Christian. For many of us, being a Christian is just, I know that we have taught about vision and purpose and all of these things. But it is important for us to understand the supernatural dimension and the implication of being a Christian. Hallelujah. Being a Christian is not just one of the many religions we have on the earth the implication of being a christian is first and foremost that you have come into oneness say after me oneness oneness when you come into oneness the bible says in genesis chapter 11 talking about nimrod and the tower of babel it says that god looked down and saw that the people although there were many he said the people is one it didn't say a one it may be grammatically wrong but it's spiritually correct he said the people he saw that they were one hallelujah therein lies the revelation of the victory and the authority of the believer that you realize that when you come into christ there is a literal translation First and foremost, from the kingdom of darkness, the Bible says, into the kingdom of God's dear son. And then he calls the Holy Spirit, the spirit of adoption. The one who is able to call different sons. What does it mean to adopt? To adopt means to pick someone who was not originally yours by, hallelujah, and bring the person to a point where he becomes a literal benefactor of your benevolence or whatever you have to a point that you can say this is an adopted child you give the child the exact same benefit the bible calls the holy spirit the spirit of adoption the one who is able to adopt the saint and bring him into that point where you are qualified by his grace and by the righteousness of christ to be an heir of god and a joint heir with Christ. Hallelujah. I've always given this example, but then let me use it again. Please, someone from come. Hallelujah. Now, all of you watch this. Assuming I own a company, are you listening to me? I want to show you the revelation of oneness and what it means for us to come into oneness and to be joint heirs with Christ. Assuming I own a company and let's assume that Tosin is a cleaner in that company. I follow me now. Is a cleaner just sweeping everywhere. And I decide to get married to her. Watch this. The moment are you listening to me? The exact moment the pronunciation is made by the pastor that I hereby declare you husband and wife. Listen. The implication is that in the realm of the spirit, God ceases to see two of us as two people. We become joined. Are you listening to me? In theology, we call it the doctrine of interpenetration. The mystery of two people, two separate entities becoming one. This is why the church is called the bride that comes into oneness with Christ. The church is the Eve of Adam. Are you listening to me? Just like, follow me please. In the book of Genesis, the Bible makes us to understand that Adam came into the scene and Eve was there. Are you following me now? The goal, the authority, everything was vested upon Adam. But the Bible makes us to understand that when Satan wanted to get that authority from Adam, he came through Eve. Are you following me now? Eve was the pride and the glory of Adam because she was cut out from him. Hallelujah. And the Bible makes us to understand in the New Testament that Christ has now become that second Adam. Are you listening to me? Now the Eve that belongs to that Adam is no longer a singular person. is a body. The bride of Christ. We have now become the Eve of this second Adam. Are you following me now? 
so that we are supposed to be joined the exact same way adam was joined to eve and so you see satan is using the same strategy in genesis wanting to get adam he came through eve this is why satan is hunting the church who is the bride the eve of this adam hallelujah but then it is important for us to understand the implication of being the bride of christ instantly tosin becomes a partaker of everything i own she begins to bear my name are you following me now now watch this whether you like her or not is not the issue there is a present day reality are you listening to me she can tell the driver please take me somewhere and the driver will say you you tosin and somebody will say stop calling her tosin she's no longer tosin now watch this if tosin does not know that revelation and there is a bully who has been troubling her before the marriage are you listening to me the bully can look at her and say if you like become a gas wife that's your cup of tea you are going to sweep this place what happens although it is a present i have never denied that she's my wife but she will keep sweeping as though we are not married are you listening to me she will keep sweeping and her words will not have power because she has not understood the implication of being my wife are you following me now if for some reason i get to find out and she suddenly comes into that revelation that come i have the right and the power to suck you out of this company and to bring you and if you reject and do not stand by my words the one who made me his wife it will now be his responsibility to prove whether he lied by telling me i'm his wife or not so the defense is not your job are you listening to me the defense for it has god designed a man to protect a woman is that correct a man is supposed to defend so if the woman speaks on behalf of the man and anyone that contends with that statement the man is supposed to come in this is how god designed and so if she talks to that man and says do not harass me listen the fact that i'm married to her does not change the bully automatically he will keep being a bully he will test her understanding of the implication of what it means to come into this new position. Now, she's used to sweeping. She's not used to somebody driving her in a jeep. Are you listening to me? And calling her good morning, ma. So, sometimes her mindset can make her so humble. She'll say, let me just take this broom and help you. But whether or not she chooses that, that is not the present reality according to the agreement. Now, when she comes into an understanding one day she will take the marriage certificate and come and summon all the workers and say by the terms that are in this certificate that i'm showing you it has been written here can you see my name signed here are you following me now and the moment she's speaking i will come and stand by her side and said i hope you are hearing from that moment listen from that moment it has not only been that now watch this two scenes here number one it is true that i'm married to her but she's still suffering are you following me now she's still suffering does that change the fact that i'm faithful are you listening to me marriage is the best description of our oneness and the implication of what it means to be joint heirs joint heirs are you following me now now the difference between a co-heir and a joint heir is this let me have another person yes please if the music director is my business associate, we are not joint heirs. Are you following me now? We are called co-heirs. Because if we need capital to start a project, hallelujah, assuming we need one million naira, I can bring 600,000 and he brings how much? 400,000. Are you following me now? Our profit is shared according to our contribution. Are you following me now? That means the day he decides to get angry, we're in trouble. Are you following me now? So, but in this case, she didn't do anything. She only told me yes. Are you following me now? And everything I have instantly belongs to her. There is a difference between being a joint heir and a co-heir. There are many believers that are trying to be co-heirs with God. The Bible never calls us co-heirs with Christ. 
Don't be so spiritual that you argue the reality of what is in the word of God. It was inspired by the spirit. A joint heir is number one. One who has come into oneness. Oneness with Christ. Oneness with Christ. That means you possess his life. The life of God is in you. Are you listening to me? You must understand the power and the implication of having what we call eternal life. Eternal life is not the life you will have when you get to heaven. No, that's not eternal life. Eternal life is God's life supplanting your biological life literally so that you begin to exist with another dimension of life. It's a supernatural life. Higher than all the limits in this realm. Either God is lying or you believe it. The implication of being one with Christ is first and foremost that we are partakers of his divine nature. Not partakers of his nature. There is a reason why the Bible says that nature is divine. Partakers of his divine nature. Hallelujah. That means we are connected. Watch this. We are connected. Every time Christ is honored, if it is true that we are one, the church must be honored. That's why every time you praise God, you also receive a portion of that blessing. Every time you truly praise and worship God and nothing happens to you, then it, it means God has lied. You see the power of praise and worship. Because whatever is happening to him must also happen to you. This is the implication of being one. The, the Israelites understood this. He said, touch them not. They are the apple of my eyes. Hallelujah. Do you realize the implication of being one with Christ? Watch this. I am one with Tosin. When we go to the market, we are going together. Are you listening to me? Every time anybody wants to speak evil against me, hallelujah, assuming I am somewhere and she's not there, if I hear you talking about her, what, what do you expect me to do? Just smile and say, wow, you are a very smart person. I live to promote her interest. In her own realm, whenever she hears you saying anything about me, because we are one. Are you following me now? The concept of oneness does not mean you are in the same location necessarily. That you have been joined in life, in purpose, in vision. Are you listening to me? Her pain becomes my pain. Her joy becomes my joy. Her vision becomes my vision. Do you understand the implication of being a joint heir with Christ? Hallelujah. That means if Jesus is righteous, I am righteous. Oh yes. Whether I feel like it or not, it, either God is lying, it's a present day reality. Accept it. This is the truth in Christ. So every time I stand before principalities and powers, the first revelation in the realm of the spirit is the one to find out whether you are in Christ or not. Outside of Christ, you do not have a platform to do anything. Are you listening to me? The basis for everything in the spirit is that you are in Christ. In Christ. Outside of Christ, you do not have a say. You do not have a platform. So in Christ, when I speak to a sick body and I command that cancer to leave, what they are saying, I'm speaking on behalf of the authority and the government of heaven. Are you listening to me? If the person does not get healed, are you listening to me? It's left for the one I'm representing to validate his reputation because it's at stake there. Are you listening to me? And so the Bible says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it says, I fear no evil. Why? For thou, who is the thou? Thou art with me. It says, if it is true that we are children, that we have been adopted 
called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation then we are heirs of god and joint heirs with christ partakers of his divine life partakers of his divine life what is the life of god what is it what is the divine life of god let me tell you what the divine life of god is the divine life of god is everything that makes him god everything every attribute that can be found because christ is the express image of god so whatever christ came to give us a sample of everything that can be found in the father hallelujah and so christ is the expression the bible calls him the express image of the father what does that mean that means that if it is true that the life of god is in us then christ becomes our standard that everything that flowed through christ his glory his power his grace should find expression in us sons of adoption so if i speak in the realm of the spirit and my words have no implication then it means my oneness has a problem in the realm of the spirit it means it has not been established and it has not been recognized do you understand what i'm saying Now watch this. Before we got married, she had her ideologies and her limitations. Watch this. When we get married, and I'm the man and she's the woman, who submits to who? What does it mean to submit? To bring your strength and your value system and everything to conformity. Are you listening to me? That, that becomes the basis because although I am married to her, she can choose to take her mindset of being a sweeper. It doesn't change the fact that I'm her husband, but she's going to suffer the consequence. And by implication, it's going to affect me. Do you understand? So the Bible says, this is God's present day reality. Now come into alignment. That's what we call the renewing of the mind. Coming into alignment with God's perspective about you and God's reality about you. Let me tell you what God has to say about his bride. Hebrews chapter 2. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hebrews chapter 2. Verse 5. Are you there? God's purpose. Hmm. I want to show you what it means. To be a joint heir with Christ. We are examining the implications of being joint heirs with Christ. For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come of which we speak. Verse 6. But one in a certain place talking about David. Psalms 8. Testifying saying. What is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that thou visitest him. Seven. It says thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor. And did set him over what? Read it. Read it. It's in your Bible. And you set him where? Is it in your Bible? Did he say the man grew there? He said God set him. That is an appointment. God set him and said, come, I set you over everything I have created. He said, God set him over the works of his hand. God says, the jurisdiction of your rulership is everything that came from my hand. So long as I am the one who created it, both in the realm of the spirit and in this realm, I bring, I pray get what i'm preaching are you getting me tonight you must get this as a revelation so what did god create start naming them one to go name them you're laughing what did god create because the bible tells us that he put all of those things in subjection to man 
the atmosphere the animals weather territories land the resources in the deep he said god has placed man he brought all of these things in subjection to man that is the reward you get for being the bride of the owner of the whole world psalms 24 the earth is the lord's and its fullness thereof now you have become his bride and he says look i put all things under your subjection I put all things. You people name everything God created. You didn't name them all. Satan. Demons. The fallen angels. He said, I put them in subjection. Principalities. Spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. I put them in submission. Let's read on. Now watch this. It says, for in that he put all in subjection under him. He did what? He said he left. Come on, read it. It's in your Bible. That means God didn't make any mistake. That later you say, ah, I forgot to put Satan under your feet. No. He said God was thorough. He made no mistake. He put all things. All things. God is not scratching his head saying, what kind of costly mistake did I make? The bride. The bride. The eve of this second Adam. Do you realize that even when it comes to calling Jesus back to the earth, it is the spirit and the bride that says come. The spirit alongside with the bride call their husband and say come the spirit and the bride say come I give you the highest oh I'm not ordinary I'm not ordinary I give you the loudest I lift my holy hands. I express to the King. I give you, I give you, help me. I give you the high praise. I give you, Lord, we give you praise you for what you have I done for us. Give you the high Listen. Listen. I give Listen. you. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? Watch this. I need to deliver us from a Christianity that allows every and anything to happen around us. The Bible says, God has brought, I, I use this lady to give you something. That means, see, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. It says, this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth. He said, but thou shalt meditate during day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. Hear this. He says, then you shall make your way. Who will make it? It's in your Bible. You shall make your way prosperous and you shall have good success. Kaparia kata. So, your finances is under your control. Your health under your control. Your life under your control. Your longevity in life under your control. Your victory. He says, God put all things under subjection to the man he created. God made no mistake. So, everything, listen, listen. The Holy Ghost comes to live in you. And directs you to champion the course of your destiny. According to the knowledge that is gained from the word of God. And then Jesus came. Watch this. Jesus came. Listen. 
Let me tell you the implication of the coming of Jesus. Do you realize that Jesus came and acted the part of the woman for you to watch? He came and became what he wants you to be. Walked upon the earth. Showed you victory over sickness. Victory over everything. Unconditional love. They wanted to throw him from a cliff. He walked through them. Died. Conquered death. They were looking for money. He was stranded. He said, go to the fish. I am convinced that the money came at the mouth the moment he spoke. He said, I am so powerful. I can use anything. Go to that fish. Bring out a coin. In John 21, listen, when he resurrected in John 21, the Bible says the disciples were struggling to catch fish. There was no fish. At his word, they caught fish and the net was about to sink. The Bible says Peter wore his clothes and ran and he came and met Jesus already roasting fish. Where did he get his own from? He said to no angel. Listen. I will tell you why he said to no angel. Do you realize that Lucifer was a fallen angel? Do you realize that the angels of God are loyal? Satan as a fallen angel is claiming ownership and God is saying, let me inform you. I did not give any angel, any angel, the earth. So any angelic being in heaven or in the earth that claims ownership of the earth is doing it illegally. It says to no angel did he ever say that he will be a partaker. He did not put the world under the subjection of any angel. The secret of victory in life is to accept by faith. Are you listening to me? That you are supernatural. Because you are the bride of Christ. You have come into oneness. We are partakers. I am a partaker. See, that's why my life will keep soaring from glory to glory. It's not because my name is Joshua Selman. I understand the implication of what it means to be one with Christ. Take me anywhere. I know the end. Glory. Glory. The glory of God. Hear me. So when you understand this, there is nothing in the kingdom called disadvantage. Cancel it out of your life. Quickly. Yeah. What then is the basis of saying you are disadvantaged? Are you listening to me? It doesn't matter what situation. You know you are victorious. Because you are the bride of Christ. When Jesus faced situations, he didn't cry and wail. And do as if he didn't have anything to do about it. The Bible says even Jesus knew what to do. He knew what to do. Hallelujah. When they met him with a hard question. They said this woman was called, caught in adultery. And Moses wrote in his law. That if a woman be caught in adultery. She should be stoned. So what do you have to say? Suddenly he tapped from the bank of the wisdom of the spirit. And he simply answered them. He says, he who does not have sin among you should cast the first stone. The Bible says they were convicted from their hearts and they threw back the stone from the oldest. It's beautiful that he started from the oldest. Because he was matured enough to have that common sense from the oldest down to the youngest. And he looked at the woman and said, woman, where are thine accusers? He said, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Do you believe that you are one with Christ? Do you believe it? The times that are coming will test that revelation. Hallelujah. Now, from the story I gave here, watch this. From the story I gave here, how did she demonstrate her oneness? How did she demonstrate her oneness? My wife in this example. 
Hallelujah. Number one, she came into terms with it. Is that correct? Number two, she began to announce it using the marriage certificate as the basis. Are you following me now? That's when you come into that. The first revelation is to accept it. Accept that in Christ is your inheritance to live a prosperous life. Many of us do not believe that this is possible. Oh, not in Nigeria. Who told you? It's possible to live in divine health. It's not just possible. It's your heritage. It's not a product of fasting and prayer. It's God's present day gift for you as being his bride. The only limit you have in Christ is the limit that Jesus too has. His limit becomes your limit. That's the reason why, listen. Watch this. Every time God speaks to you, he speaks to you from his realm of ability and reality. God can look at you and say, Mos um, he says, Moses, tell the people to move forward. Was God stupid? Was he not seeing the Red Sea? He said, Moses, tell them to move forward. You do not know the person you are in partnership with. Ask them to move forward. When Joshua was afraid, he said, Joshua, be strong. As I was with Moses, I am with you. Be strong and of good courage. Every time God is about to set you on assignment, he reminds you that you are not alone. This is the secret of great men. This is the secret of generals. They came to a point where they, they got a revelation. Every time I pray for the sick, the Lord taught me this. That's why many times I take a while before I start ministering. I'm coming into that alignment that I am not alone. I'm not alone. So I sing songs that reminds me of his presence. Look at what God is doing in this ministry. Does it not tell you that these are not the works of a man? What kind of intelligence can make a young man or young people to do this? Doesn't it tell you that it looks like there is a bigger person? Young Cho says the Holy Spirit, my senior partner. And with the ministry and oneness with that senior partner, he produced the largest church in the world till date. An ordinary Korean that does not even understand English very well. So it's not about oratory that Americans teach how to do this. Seven steps to do these stories. If you are not in your oneness with him, you will be shocked. Are you understanding this? Tonight I'm here to provoke you and then we'll pray that you are one with Christ. So as you're writing your test and writing your exams, you are one with Christ. You are one with Christ. You are one with Christ. That's why the sister could get her, her job out of over 500 or 200 people. See, when you see some people blessed for no reason, stop looking at them. Look at the person they are in unity with. See, listen, let me tell you the implication of coming into oneness with someone. When David became king in Israel, he said, Is there any man in Saul's house that I may show him kindness? Who was brought? They brought a cripple called Mephibosheth. Hey. Mephibosheth sat at the royal table, although he was crippled, because he was called by the king. Mephibosheth was called and he was honored the same food the king ate, he ate. Hallelujah. That's why you can see a man who does not speak good English, but God is still using him. You can see a man who is not fine, is not handsome, it doesn't matter. Demons still cry out because it's not about your looks, it's about your oneness. 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 In many African countries, they don't preach in English. They cast out devils in their local dialects. The devils have never argued that they don't understand the language. Never. I am one with Christ. His supernatural life 
lives in me. Are you following me now? So you are not weak. Many of you are waiting until the day you become a man or a woman of God. No. This revelation has an implication. There is nothing I will do in this life that I will not emerge at the top. It sounds like pride, but I'll be lying if I don't tell you this. It's not because of me. There is no project by the grace of God. All from the time he and I started, there is nothing we have laid our hands to do that we did not accomplish. Not because we are great men. Are you listening to me? Because we have a great husband. So you can walk in divine health. Why? I am one with him. His life lives in me. That no demon can come and disturb you. Listen. Can I challenge you friends? Get angry and solve this issue of demons once and for all in your life. Hear me. It was not designed to be a struggle. There's no demon that has threatened Jesus from his throne in heaven. Are you listening to me when you are entering a car to travel be conscious of the fact that he is with you are you understanding what i'm saying there are deaths happening everywhere i'm sure you have been getting reports of people dying and all of this i feel very sad and grieved in my heart and we pray that god will keep these people but now that you are alive do you believe your life is by chance I'm challenging you tonight do you realize there is nothing called chance in the realm of the spirit everything happens as a result of cause and effect you are not gathered today by chance are you listening to me it is not by chance Jesus did not become Lord of all by chance you don't become healthy by chance. Are you listening to me? You don't become prosperous by chance. You don't become anointed by chance. It's by light. The illumination of the word of God engrafted in your spirit. You don't speak to Satan and say, Satan, leave. And then he leaves by chance. There is no chance about it. Am I convincing you? Get angry and believe this. So if you are to advance in your life, it's not going to be by chance. Satan is not invading this world by chance. Channel O is not taking over by chance. Are you listening to me? MTV is not moving by chance. What's the name of this Nigerian rapper that's those guys that sing all kinds of of songs that you cannot even resist buying the album they sing rubbish and nonsense is that called chance some of them slept in graves for days received powers and anointings came back wrote nonsense on tapes and there is a force moving men beyond their control come on nothing happens in life by chance success is not by chance long life is not by chance all the people in the early days of the bible lived long not by chance and he slept with his fathers and he lived a good old age and slept with his father and he lived a good old age and slept with his father we travel all the time i have never feared death in my life are you listening to me why We live in a hostile environment. We preach and we walk among people. All kinds of people. I've gone to Yola. I've gone to Maiduguri. I went to Maiduguri on road. I missed my flight. I went on road on a Friday. And we started the journey in the afternoon. You need the word of God to come alive in your spirit. 
I am convinced that no man can kill me until my assignment is over. This is a revelation I have given to myself. If it were death, I would have died since. Are you listening to me? You don't know the story of my life. If you know the story of my life, you will know that the word of God is not a mistake. I was diagnosed of fungal infection. My head was literally rotten. Are you listening to me? My mother is alive. I have classmates, you can ask them. There was no drug that was used on me. Everything, the doctors were tired. I moved from teaching hospital to teaching hospital. I've seen the power of God. If you live your life to chance, you will die a beggar in this life. There's no chance in this life. Everything happens as a definite operation of God's principles. I've been hit by a car. Are you listening to me? I've met with armed robbers on the road. I have met demons. What has happened again? All kinds of things. My eyes, my eyes, I have been, that demons have oppressed me. Oh, demons oppressed me for a long time in my life. And today we keep soaring as if Satan does not exist. We live and we move, we plan our activities with no room for Satan. You think it's Satan's will for you to be hearing this word and to be building yourself in grace? See, Paul said we make our boast in the Lord. The problem is there is no other way to communicate this without sounding like you are boasting. I'll never be poor in this life. Never. It's not a confession. It's a present. It's this, I will never, the same way I can never be a woman. That's the exact same way. I can never be a failure in this life. Please don't take it for pride. I am speaking on account of the revelation of my oneness with Christ. You don't need to travel to Dubai or Hawaii for greener pastures. That's nonsense. The Bible says the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down. He didn't mention the name of any country in this world. In green pastures. Green pastures is a spiritual location. Where the word of God gains consistent fruitfulness in your life. Hi. Whatsoever he doeth prospers. Are you following me now? Jacob went to the house of Laban. Suddenly Laban began to prosper. And this was his testimony. He said, I come to terms with the fact that I have been blessed for your sake. When the ark of the covenant was being restored, it was temporarily kept in Obededom's house. And within that period, Obededom flourished. Listen, kill all of the excuses and all of the things you are putting and take charge from tonight. Take charge because the earth has been given unto you. Your finances will not grow a miracle and change one day. Your health will not change one day. Demons will not just come. Are you listening to me? Things will begin to change the day that you receive as an act of humility what Christ has done for you. Everywhere you take me, the grace of God will distinguish me. It's not because of me. Esther was scattered among many women, but something separated her. Are you listening to me? Do you believe what I'm teaching tonight? It must have an implication in your life. So you expect the blessings that come to your life on account of your oneness with Christ. Everywhere I go to becomes the Garden of Eden. Why the Garden of Eden? Because that's, that was where God designed for man in the first place. And the Holy Spirit leads you. Your life becomes beauty and glory. Do you believe this? 
So it is within your power to change your finances. Are you hearing me? Don't say I'm young. Don't say I'm old. It's within your power to stop demons from oppressing your life. It's within your power to speak and expect a manifestation in your life. If I bless you, sir, honestly with all humility, you are blessed. You will see it in your life. Hallelujah. So your life is supposed to have prophetic implication that anywhere you are, something is about to happen. Let me use the words of Paula Defarasen. That everywhere you go, something is about to Everywhere Jesus went to, you knew that just give a little time, you will hear that something has happened there. He, he, he always, there was a prophetic implication. So anywhere God takes you, because you are one with him, there should be a prophetic implication of your presence. He takes me into a wilderness. I turn that wilderness into a fruitful vine. And I turn that fruitful vine into a forest. Mission accomplished. He takes me to the valley of the shadow of death where there are dry bones. I turn every dry bone into an exceeding great army. Mission accomplished. The Bible says that weak and beggarly men were brought to the cave of Adullam where David was. And David turned those people into mighty warriors. To the time to a point where David said oh that I would drink of the pool of Bethlehem. And the Bible says three of those men killed all the armies and went and fetched water and brought for David. He said the men were mighty. They fought with swords and their hands cleaved to the sword. It will not fall. Mastery. You can turn anybody. That's why I don't care who you are. When you sit under this anointing, there is transformation. Your life must change because of the prophetic implication of the presence of God. Great men and women like Catherine Kuhlman, William Branham, they understood their oneness and the prophetic implication was across their communities. Hallelujah. And so you speak over your life and you declare. You may look ordinary, but not when you begin to speak. When you begin to speak and declare that I am blessed. Oh, I'm blessed in the city blessed in the country i see no limits the hand of god is upon me i see no limitations in my life the strength of god is at work in me no weakness the bible says none was weak none was feeble all through their road in the wilderness none was sick none was feeble their clothes grew with them joint heirs joint heirs Say after me, I'm an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. Say, I'm a joint heir with Christ. I partake in royalty. I partake in dominion. I partake in prosperity. I partake in divine health. Yes. Yes, you must prophesy this. This must become your confession on account of what Christ has done. Hallelujah. You must be open to prophecy and to visions. Why? The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And the Holy Spirit is the one who testifies about Jesus. And he lives in you. He is the spirit of prophecy quickened in your inner man. And so you can see. So you can hear. Don't say I can't hear the voice of God. My sheep hear my voice. You plot evil against me, you are only going to frustrate yourself. Because I will climb you and your, your plant and just walk. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil. The testimony will keep being from glory to glory. From glory to glory. Oh yes, from glory to glory. You will never hear about a worse tomorrow. Is from glory to glory. Are you listening to me? That whatever challenge you face, in the midst of that challenge, you stamp it and you keep smiling as if you are not seeing anything. Hmm. 
I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. I believe in his grace. I believe in who Jesus is. I believe in my oneness with him. Hallelujah. A gentleman here, some groups of young men, I think they were in the occult or something. They used to come for koinonia right from when they were in that occultic thing. And so they came and they were confessing to me. Can I be honest with you? I wasn't even interested in what they were saying. I was going to have a meeting soon. It wasn't an issue. Whatever the plan is, the Bible says a thousand shall fall by your side. Ten thousand. See, it's a different thing if I have not faced some of these things and I'm talking. Then it's easy to say he's shouting. Let me tell you, there are few things you have faced in life that I have not faced. I tell you with all humility. If it's financial stress, we have faced it. Are you listening to me? I am not married, but we have enjoyed the burden of being real fathers. In terms of the financial implication on people, in terms of the psychological implication, I know that the word of God works. You must convince yourself and stop arguing it. There are many of you that it has not yet become a reality. It's easy to jump in church and to talk. That you tell yourself, yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I am a partaker of his divine nature. If he is a king, then I am a king. There is no true king without authority. Hallelujah. And what you see the Lord doing in our midst is the awe-inspiring hand of God. His signature that truly shows that he is the husband of the bride. That's why we give him all the glory. That's why there is no reason to brag and make noise. But I cannot but tell you this is the truth. This is your heritage in Christ. That when you come into the revelation of your oneness with Christ, it doesn't matter whether you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You can change things. Stop saying things will change. Start changing them. One day, in the sweet by and by, things will be better. When? Our parents said this from the days of your youth. Oh, things will change, I know. Since when you were crawling, things will change. Things will change. Now you're almost getting married, things will change. And what your father didn't tell you, he's now telling you. He's saying, thank God you are now a man. You will change the things. Hallelujah. I find it very difficult teaching on things like this because the only way to teach about this is to, it sounds like you are bragging about it. But there's no other way to express it in that truth. Are you listening to me? It's just like looking at your friends and saying, I am married. You know, sometimes you can feel, am I hurting them? But is it a lie? Or that they made your father a senator. And you say, my daddy just became a senator. Some things, as painful as it is to convey them, they are the truth. Jesus said, before your father Abraham, I am. It wasn't a lie. He said, I am the bread of life. I am the living water. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. How about Jesus? He will see people who were older than him. And he was saying, my little children. <laughs> see, see. I hope you realize that everybody, the disciples that were older than Jesus were older than him by more than two years because all his colleagues two years and below were killed when he was small so peter peter was married because jesus healed his mother-in-law so peter he was rebuking satan out of peter and he called them little children a man who was born in their presence this is what pained the people they say is this not joseph's son enough is enough you this small boy just like they look at us and speak and say how can a small boy like you say you are prophesying to people 
Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. I am what I am. In as much as we try to be humble, he has anointed us. We cannot deny it. As much as we try, I am blessed. I am victorious. Is the truth from God's standpoint. We are a blessed people. Accept it. And give him glory for it. We are dressing nice. Let God be praised. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is because of what Christ has done. I apologize if we sound proud. Are you listening to me? But I'm challenging you. It is what he gave us. He gave us. It's an inheritance in Christ. That's why the worshippers minister like angels. They minister with the revelation that they are one. That's why the media keep moving from glory to glory. It's not by chance. That's why the ushers keep moving by from grace to grace. See, listen. That's why we will keep getting sinners saved. Sinners will keep coming and they'll keep getting born again. No devil will stop them. Because it's the authority of Christ that is in motion. Are you listening to me? For four years, we kept meeting while on campus. Many people will come in the night. For four years, some of you never slept between Sunday and Monday. In the rain, in the sun. No chair, no seat, no balloon, no poster. How can you explain that? People criticize us of doing jazz. They criticize us of doing everything. They still say it till today, till tomorrow. People hear of the miracles and they talk. Did that leg really grow? Did that hand grow? Did the SS change? See, in Christ, you are a wonder. You are a sign and a wonder. Are you listening to me? In Christ. When Jangfa stands to prophesy, when Manasseh prophesies, he says, How are these people? These people have taught something. You have robbed something on your rob what? Rob what? Hallelujah. Many of you are surprised to see how changed and transformed you are. You gave up on yourself, but see what God has done in your life today. It is a product. I'm challenging you. From tonight, realize that you are a partaker of his royalty. You are not weak. You are not beggarly. You have the power to bless. You have the power to call for things that be not as though they were. Create a future out of the word of God. Your words have prophetic implications. Speak as the bride of Christ that you are. Hallelujah. I say it with all humility. Ask all the leaders. From the time we started Koinonia, by the grace of God and to the glory of the Father above, we have never had a meeting. Ask them. Never had a meeting to discuss and say, where will we get the money for this week? No. Hallelujah. Where is it coming from? Have we ever come to rob your house? Did you ever see me with something on my face? And I say, man, I say, through the fence, this way. Every Thursday night. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. You are one with Christ. His ability flows through you. His wisdom flows through you. I can never meet a challenge in my life. Give me time, I will solve it. Give me time. I will disengage my wisdom and tap into a higher wisdom. Take me anywhere. It doesn't matter what the limitations are. There is an ability in me. I have knowledge. Epignosis is the knowledge of the spirit beyond my age, beyond my level of experience, beyond my exposure. When I speak to you, I engage the ability of the spirit. If I bless you, you are blessed. Hear me. It's not because my name is Joshua Selman. That is your heritage in Christ. That is your heritage in Christ. 
you can bless you can speak prophesy you're tired of sickness tell yourself i refuse sickness i refuse it stop giving excuses for it every time you have ideas and projects nothing is coming in your head lay hands and say i engage the ability of the spirit bigger than my own you are in class and a cause is threatening you get angry many of you are afraid of your exams there are sicknesses that come when you are about to write your exam many of you have already bought all the drugs you have arranged them many of you are already worried now where will i get the money to buy provisions during exams and you have started thinking you have you have been typing text for three days hiding it in your draft about the kind of lie you will give your parents to send you money you say ah my father knows i used this one last time where will you change and believe the word of god let god be true and let every man be a liar do you not believe that god can move men to bless you hallelujah your roommate is complaining every time she has epilepsy she has epilepsy every time you come you lay your hands and say how is your epilepsy don't just laugh about it we are going to pray i'm challenging you god will never take responsibility for your future to the degree that you should take it his responsibility is to watch over his word to perform it Kenneth Hagin, please let me have someone come. Just say, sir. Kenneth Hagin, go and read his book, I Believe in Visions. This was his encounter. Jesus was speaking to him. Just stand there. Jesus was speaking to him. Are you listening to me? And suddenly, a demon came in between them. And the demon began to jump. And Jesus kept speaking. Can you imagine? How can a demon come to insult the king of kings and the lord of lords jesus kept speaking and he wasn't hearing jesus because the demon was shouting and making noise at a point kenneth e Hagin, he was angry he felt embarrassed how can jesus christ the one who died and rose again he's speaking and a demon is jumping and at a point by divine illumination kenneth Hagin looked at the demon and said i rebuke you in the name of jesus and the demon disappeared and left hear what jesus told him he said if you did not do anything about it there is nothing i would have done oh god when will you change my life the day you accept the fact that you are one with christ and begin to take your rightful place in christ hallelujah this is one of the blessings of prayer because it offers you the opportunity to speak to Hagar, to declare the bible says job 22 verse 28 it says and thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee it said where the word of a king is there is power words have prophetic implications i don't waste my words because i realize they carry power Are you listening to me true believers are not noisemakers they understand the prophetic implication of their words the bible says do not say before an angel i made a mistake because their job is to accomplish the words that are spoken by the saints we are going to pray and make some decrees over our lives are you listening to me from today realize that you are ruling and you are reigning with christ say after me i am royalty I am one with Christ. My presence has prophetic implications. Yes. When you come into a room, your roommates should start dancing and rejoicing. There are some people you can do anything to be roommates with. You can pay for the room and say, come. Somehow you know that their presence carry prophetic implication. Look at how they sought after Jesus Christ. They just wanted his presence in a place because his presence carried prophetic implications 
every time I go to a house or I go everywhere, I am conscious of his presence. And so when I step in and sit down, I know that the king of glory is sitting. As I speak, I am his ambassador. I am his bride. He is committed to back me up. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. He says, amplified. He says that God is alert and active watching over his word to perform it. Hallelujah. There are implications of being a joint heir with Christ. That you have the righteousness of Christ and you are the righteousness of Christ. Say after me, I am the righteousness of Christ. Above condemnation. Above guilt. Yes. This is God's present reality. Above guilt. Satan cannot look at Paul and say, Saul, you used to persecute the church. Paul was so free of guilt that he could say his testimony and go and sleep about it. He said, I, Paul, used to persecute the church. And he didn't feel bad about it. He went and slept. The greatest proof that you have conquered an issue is that you can talk about it freely. Are you listening to me? Divine health is your heritage. It's your heritage in Christ. I emphasize divine health from your mind, from your spirit. Are you listening to me? You have headache when you are writing exams. Someone, I heard someone gave a testimony some weeks ago that used to sleep in the exam hall. Many of you don't sleep. You have all kinds of pills in your house. You have to take five or six. You are less than 25. You are already taking pills as if you are 70 years. While the Bible says the age, their age will be like the age of a tree. Hallelujah. I'm not against medication. Don't, don't take me wrong. I'm only challenging you not to be complacent over things that are taking the place of the word of God in your life. Are you listening to me? You are doing your project and there's no idea. Your lecturer calls you dull. Say, Holy Spirit, I may be dull in myself, but let's work together and shock this man. Let him know there is a wisdom. He said, I will give you a wisdom and a mouthpiece that your enemies will not be able to resist nor gain say. You are going for your defense. You are fidgeting. The Bible says when you stand before them, you shall not be afraid of what to say. For in that very same hour, it will not be you speaking, but the spirit of your father. Hallelujah. When you stretch your hands to bless a man, they look ordinary. You just add a bar with it. Yes. But it has prophetic implications. That when you lay your hands upon this lady and say, sweetheart, you are blessed. Suddenly, the heavens, remember the meeting last week, the heavens begin to shift and to change. To accommodate what you have spoken. Hallelujah. There are things in our lives that we have left the responsibility for God. Every day I keep speaking. I say I'm established as a man. I'm established. If you're waiting for your job to establish you, be sure you'll be established at age 50. I've said it here. Let me challenge the guys before we pray. How much is one block? Have you asked? How much is one block? How much? Eh? 200? 110 naira. How many of them do you, how much is the salary you will collect net? Aside from tight and your parents and other. The moment you get a job, the hands that are waiting to receive the salary will run you in deficit. Your father, your mother, all the people that you are going to bless. And those people, you will bless them legitimately. Hallelujah. Marriage right now is like a building project. You build foundation and then you breathe in. You rest. And then when these people that carry scaffold for building, there's something they say, oh, Jeve, hey. and then they say, oh, yeah, let's go. And then they move.
except God helps you except you come into alignment do you realize the prophetic implication of creating your future by speaking this is not about being a Pentecostal this is God's weapon kings reign by their words if it is true that you are a partaker of God's divine nature then it is your job to begin to paint your destiny in the place of prayer that's why see prayer is not just a ritual to feel spiritual and to fall it is God's tool for spiritual architecture you build your life I don't just allow anything happen in my life and then you say whatever will be will be let me tell you the truth is what you don't want that will be when you leave a farm without plowing it something will grow what's the name what did you define with in your primary science some of you jump class what is it called unwanted plants they are plants but they are unwanted so tonight i'm challenging you that you are a joint heir with christ you must tell yourself i refuse to die until my assignment is over and I will transit with dignity and honor. Satan will tell you, you are the one that has the big mouth to say this. Every time he tells you, remember the story. Where's Tosin? One more time, please come again. Remember the, all of you look at her so that as you pray, her face, every time Satan wants to speak, remember, the bully in my story is Satan. I'm speaking a parable now. You people are not like the disciples of old. You are supposed to ask me to interpret. And then I'll say the bully is Satan. The husband is the husband man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Although she has been married into royalty, her lack of knowledge or taking steps in that regard still crippled her. Do you know that every time we accuse God, God feels very bad on the throne because he ever remains faithful. Are you listening to me? You must rise up. The Bible says arise. You must arise before you shine. Arise. Shake up the dust. Tell yourself, the Lord according to Hebrews 2 has put all things. Where? 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 Where is Satan? Where is poverty? Where is sickness? Where is failure? You must believe it. Don't just say, Kai, this koinonia, we are behaving like children. You, you better take it seriously. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Rise up on your feet. Come on, just pray in the spirit for a while. Pray in the spirit for a while. Walk around. Walk around. Come on. Walk around. Le baka parata bosete. Le bre de bo shatara. Zebra non zebra di bondi ne bo satali brada sa sabre di ba. Katali ba kore bo shatali bandi ne bo sa sabre di ba. Recopariere the spirit. Charge up your spirit man. Because we are about to prophesy. We are about to decree. We are about to establish. Come on walk around. Walk around. All things, she has put all things in subjection. All things, poverty, failure. My prosperity is under my control. My destiny. Sinabados, 
Hallelujah. Listen. All of you listen, please. Let me teach you how to change things in life. Let me teach you how to change things. Many of you don't know how to change things in the spirit. Let me teach you. It's not just about blindly praying in tongues. Let me teach you something. Do you know what the Bible calls Yazar? The power of creative imagination. Are you listening to me? Every time you are praying in tongues and you are praying to the end that you want to establish something in the spirit. Are you listening to me? As you are praying in tongues, employ the power of prophetic imagination. Put that limitation before your eyes. Are you listening to me? And pray squarely like a priest. If you are speaking against health or sickness, see it. See yourself rising in health. Are you listening to me? And then you will begin to be conformed to what you are seeing. If you are speaking about your finances, begin to see the new you walking in finances, in grace, in glory. Don't just pray blindly and allow your mind to roam around. Go ahead and pray in the spirit. Come on, pray. Pray the spirit. Charge your spirit, man. Because we are about to prophesy. We are about to decree. We are about to establish. All things. All things. Under his control. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. One more time, let me read Hebrews chapter 2, verse 8. Thou has put all things. Pick up your Bible because you are going to personalize it. I am in control. No matter how things get, I am in control. I am in control. Yes. 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 You are not out of control. Say I am in control. No matter how bad things are, I am in control. I'm in control. You're not see. Listen, listen. Hold on. Hold on, please. Hold on. I know we like saying God is in control. Hallelujah. That is right. But now, when you say I am in control, you are not replacing God. Are you listening to me? What you are saying is that, look, as a king, no matter what it is, it's not enough to make me stand up from my throne. I am in control. The whole earth is still in chaos. Jesus is still seated on the throne. Are you listening to me? We are going to read the A part of Hebrews chapter 2, verse 8. Hallelujah. We are going to read it up to the part that it says, 
he left nothing that is not put under him everywhere there is him you are going to put your name not me me is not your name are you listening to me are you ready now one to read verse eight thou hast put all things in subjection to joshua selman's feet for in that you put all things under joshua selman you left nothing that is not put under him listen how many things are within your control listen the word under your feet simply is a prophetic language it was an ancient language that meant you are in control how many things are you in control of your finances your health now you are going to prophesy are you listening to me you listen you're going to prophesy in the name of the one that you are in oneness with begin to call forth your health your finances wisdom prophesy i am in control I am in control in the name of Jesus. I am in control of my environment, of everything that happens around me. Hallelujah. I am in control. I refuse to be sick. I am a sickness. I refuse poverty. I am in control. In the name of Jesus. My presence carries a prophetic indication. Prophesy. Prophesy. I call finances. In the name of Jesus, wisdom, 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 the spirit of revelation, insight, power, advancement. I am well favored. I am honored. Hallelujah. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I am not weak and beggarly. He has called me partaker of his honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, many of you, on account of your oneness with Christ, you have suffered, literally. Why will you not be glorified on account of your oneness with Christ? Many of you, on account of your oneness, you have been criticized. On account of your oneness, you have experienced it. Why will you not be honored on account of your oneness? We like suffering for Christ. We run away from being honored by Christ, for Christ, and with Christ. Hallelujah. Now, you're going to speak to things. Listen, you are not praying to God. Are you listening to me? You are wearing your kingly crown, and you're going to begin to decree. The Bible says in Job 22, 28, And thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established. Listen. He told Job, he said, Job, has thou commanded thy morning? Have you spoken to the atmosphere to respond according to the word of God? 
The Bible says the Lord stands in the congregation of the mighty. And then he begins to speak from there. We are going to decree. Listen. You are going to give boundaries to everything called evil in your life. Are you listening to me? You are going to draw a line. The Bible says oppression shall be far from thee. It is within your power to speak. Now is not the time to stare at your neighbor. Now is the time to speak. Tell yourself, death, you are under my feet. Failure, sickness. Prophesy for yourself, for your family, for your family. No death, no sickness. Prophesy. Your words have prophetic implications. Speak to the atmosphere. Impregnate the womb of the morning. Let the atmosphere be pregnant with the words that you speak. Your words have prophetic implications. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. Ever increasing glory, ever increasing grace, ever increasing grace, ever increasing finances, ever increasing health, ever increasing honor, ever increasing wisdom, prophesy, son of man, prophesy, son of man, prophesy. Prophesy, prophesy to the heavens. Prophesy, Hallelujah. 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 Are you ready to speak over your exams? Now that you know who you are. Are you ready to prophesy? Listen. Listen. You're going to call all your courses one by one. Are you listening to me? One by one. And declare. And say, open up unto me. Open up. Listen. You're going to receive wisdom. Insight. Favor. Come on, begin to pray. Prophesy. The time has come. Arise. The time has come. Prophesy. Prophesy. Call yourself the head, not the tail. Prophesy. You are both. You are both. You are both. Prophesy. No missing script. No missing script. Prophesy. No victimization. No victimization. Prophesy. Favor. Favor. In every cause. Favor. Favor for you. Prophesy. The words have prophetic implications. Prophesy. Make up test. Make up test. Prophesy. You are a king. 
Hallelujah. 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 The Lord declared to us this year that it's a season of great grace and glory. Listen, these are not imaginary spiritual things. I need you to know that we are not drinking tea when the word just came on our head. Are you listening to me? He said, that which I tell you in the secret, declare thou on the mountaintop. You are going to pray for yourself. This is not for your neighbor. Are you listening to me? Invoke it from the spirit and say it's a season of great grace, glory, honor, a distinguishing. Come on, prophesy. Speak it. I step into unusual honor. Unusual grace, unusual grace, unusual favor, unusual grace. Great grace, unusual grace, unusual grace, unusual grace, grace, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, shut up, shut up. I expect favor. I expect glory. I expect grace. I expect it in my life. I look forward to it. Yes. I am like a well watered garden. Hey, shut up. Christ lives in me. I have eternal life in my spirit. The blessing is upon me. It speaks everywhere I go. The blessing is upon me. The blessing is upon me. I am a career of the blessing. It is upon me. Hallelujah. The blessing is upon me. Creating the garden of Eden. Everywhere I go. The blessing is upon me. 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 The Hallelujah. Say after me, the blessing is upon me. And the blessing speaks. Favor follows me everywhere I go. The grace of God is upon me. I enjoy unusual insight. Uncommon grace. Uncommon favor. I walk in glory. I grow from strength to strength. From grace to grace. From power to power, from wisdom to wisdom, I refuse to be sick. I refuse to be a failure. I am the head, not the tail. I am above 
and I am in control. Shout hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. So throughout this week, I'd like you to walk with that mindset. You are in control. Stop looking weak and beggarly. Listen, it's not a guarantee for you to be proud and arrogant. And when you see other people, you begin to belittle and talk them. You are immature if you do that. You are not spiritual. Are you listening to me? Revelation is not a guarantee for you to talk down others. Are you listening to me? When you find someone who has not seen the light, you share in love. You don't try to show superiority. Any man that does that, you are being childish. It's a proof of spiritual childishness. Are you listening to me? One more time, say, I am in control. Lord, we give you praise. Oh, I take charge of my life. I take charge. Parko pariata. I take charge. Hallelujah. We're out of time. If tonight is your first time worshiping with us, very quickly, inside and outside, I'd like you to quickly run out. Please appreciate them as they come. Inside and outside, if this is your first time, please keep clapping. They are coming. Thank you very much for coming. Inside and outside, we have a blessing for you. Inside and outside, keep clapping. They are coming. This is your first time of worshiping with us. At Koinonia, God is faithful. Oh, hallelujah. Keep clapping. They are coming. The Spirit of God brought them by Himself. Keep clapping. We love you. Thank you for coming. You could have been anywhere else. Thank you for coming. Keep appreciating them. They are coming. They came by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for making our time to worship with us. This is Koinonia. How many of you were blessed tonight? Praise God. It's our desire that you take charge and that you begin to walk in royalty. Hallelujah. It's your heritage in Christ. He brought you into that position and put all things under your feet. We want to pray and prophesy to you. Hallelujah. These are not empty words. We are speaking out of revelation. And we are going to call for the blessing of the Lord upon you. Saints of God, stretch your hands and pray for them. We command the blessing upon you. In the name of Jesus, you will know that you have met a people of revelation tonight. We call for the heavens to bless you. In the name of Jesus, you are blessed in your going out and your coming in. We prophesy and we speak to the heavens on your behalf. You're walking in power. You're walking in favor. You're walking in grace. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming. In one minute, I'd like you to just walk down the aisle and you meet the ushers. They welcome you and just have your information. I appreciate them, please. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekatos Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take a legata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.